Looking good. Okay, I think we can see it. Uh, today we're going to talk about artificial intelligence. I'm not going here to sell anybody. I'm here to inform, and I want to thank the people at PTC for giving us the forum, and I especially want to thank the people at Komatsu Mining Group for allowing us to show these e examples and show the world what can be done in the simplification. I'm a great believer in simplification. You'll notice an accent. It's a modified Australian New Zealand. I can speak five types of English, including simplified technical English. You're going to hear a little bit about simplified technical English very shortly, and I'm going to show you how we have modified that. The people at Komatsu decided that they would uh, update the documentation and make it a lot easier. Here is the star of the show, the Komatsu mining machine. It looks terrifying but it's extremely efficient, 50 tons of coal an hour, but it's uh, electrically driven. It's a giant Tesla, 2,300 volts. Your hairdryer has 115 volts. That's a lot of hairdryers out there. But this is an enormously uh, large 80-ton machine. It's underground, sometimes at half a mile. You're not going to get pull this out for the maintenance depot in a hurry. It has to be connected with an umbilical cord to the surface. So it is an underground mining machine, and we're going to simplify that, and I'm going to show you how it was done. This is where the beast lives, and it lives underground. You can see it's a very confined space, and the machine is safe, but the people, we want to make them extra safe. So the first thing at Komatsu Mining is safety, safety, safety. You have to have mine safety. So everything and all the instructions must be very clear, concise, easy to read. To get there, we have used artificial intelligence and a subdivision I'll tell you about in a minute called natural language processing. Our text editor and great new things coming from Patty, like that roadmap, we'll meet all those objectives in the roadmap. Uh, it's the stage manager. This thing couldn't run without Arbitex. So we're sitting on the top of Arbitex, completely invisible in the background with XML, Ditter, and all the graphics coming along, it's great. But we're only going to look at content. If you're not writing a good sentence, and you're going to see some bad ones, uh, then you can correct it. You have to write good, clear, concise English. The first rule of technical writing, when we teach technical writing, which we do, we tell them, know your audience. If you're not writing for the audience, why bother? I have a wonderful customer that makes industrial lasers. The publication manager there has a great saying, Give them a damn manual they can read. And I think that's a pretty good motto to go with. Give them a manual they can read. Here is the audience for the Komatsu mining machine underground looking at this screen, and they're going to get information from that screen to make adjustments to this machine. And of course, it's a complicated piece of software, which you'll see in a minute. But they are, Komatsu is, has global reach. If you're not familiar with the company, you probably have. They are making far beyond the uh, uh, the, the type of uh, bulldozers and things, they're completely about 149 countries. Now, I, got, I promise today we're going to have a live demo. It is a live demo. <laughs> we're going to see it in a minute. It's coming up. Hold it. I just want to set the stage. Well, to set the stage, look at the bottom of my screen here. I hope everybody can read it. Disappears. I'll read it anyway. Disappears when the gathering head button is selected on the remote. I am lost in my mind. <laughs> Okay, so to rewrite that in simplified English, it's not difficult, people. It's easy. The light is not illuminated when you select the down button on the remote control station. It's a thousand times easier to understand. It goes into multiple languages everywhere in the world. So you can see, and you notice we capitalized the down button because in other languages they would be looking for something and they would recognize it from Japan. There's not a kanji down button, but they would in their mind relate to the down button. So you can see we're coming up to more of this in the presentation. Now why simplify? Well, first of all, you've got to increase the readability of your documentation. Boring, long stuff, the millennials aren't going to go for it. Look at what PTC is going to do. October, they're going to come out with A1. They're going to have all that multimedia stuff. And it's going to go out to tablets, mobiles. Wow. <laughs> it's going to change. I'm still an old paper guy. We still like those old manuals. You had to put the changes in manually in the binder, and you click it open. Ah, that's gone. That error is gone. Reduce the errors during maintenance. A lot of errors are made during the maintenance. 
This has been a problem in the aerospace industry where it's plastic components, composite uh, things. And if you take a special type of screwdriver, to it, you'll ruin the complete composite. So try to avoid that damage. And that, uh, clear instructions will do that. Decrease the cost and time of training. Training is going to be enormous coming along. Uh, we come out of the aerospace industry, everybody is looking at the pilot shortages, which may not be a shortage, but will be a shortage. Uh, we're looking everywhere to training. All of the knowledge is leaving these companies in the, when people retire. New people are coming in. The old father and son teaching of the knots, gone. Training going to be a big thing. Technical documentation is where they're going to get the training. Customer satisfaction. Komatsu, bless them, they work hard on customer satisfaction. We got this assignment through when they listened to their customers, please, can you simplify the information for us in our mining operations? So that came from their customers. They are listening to their customers, reacting to their customers. And I wish more companies would do that. And we get a lot of complaints with on call, these new uh, online calling things with people I can't get through to customers. That's a whole area for chatbots. This will also work for chatbots, by the way. Okay, standardize the product terminal. You're gonna see in a minute what I mean. I'll leave that one coming along. Remember that one. Standardize your product terminology. I want to improve the quality of information. It's not difficult. Somebody said the other day in one of these seminars, quality is free. Quality, I said, wow, that's an idea. It doesn't take any more to write a good sentence as it write a bad sentence. We're going to see how we can always write good sentences. And again, prepare for these future technicians. They're going to be coming along all sorts of Shapes and sizes, countries, languages, all sorts of problems are going to be in training people to take over these new tasks, which are computer driven, highly computer literate. We're going to see a lot more of that. <clears throat> well, when Komatsu did their exploration of how they will improve the documentation, they borrowed an idea from aerospace. I, the topic today is simplified English, not simplified technical English. We have made a modification. If we have aerospace customers, uh, people listening today from the aerospace, if you'd like more information on what PTC has in this area, they have a lot on S1000D, contact the Arbitex business unit. There's some wonderful people there that will tell you all about it, far more than I know about the spec S1000D. All we did is we just hijacked the spec 1000, not hijacked it, but we just took it and we modified it for them. But it does work, big Airbus, big product, 500 ton aircraft, global, big uh, mining machine, global. So you can see the complexity in the same problems that the hydraulic systems are almost identical on an aircraft as into a mining machine. Now, I want to show you a little secret today. Promise not to tell anybody. Well, of course, you're going to tell everybody. This is the secret Israeli chip invented in Israel by a company called Halo. It's a, it's a startup, but it claims on the size of that penny that it can do 26 tops. Tops are trillions of operations per second. Now it's interesting. Uh, this is the future. AI is the future and it's going to be on little chips like that. Apollo 11, 50 years ago, it had 145,000 lines of computer code. Wow. <laughs> Your Apple smartphone has an awful lot more power than the first Apollo 11 computer. Now, we could look at Facebook. Facebook's got 62 million lines of code. That's a lot of maintenance. Oh, yeah, but Google gets even better. They got 2 billion lines of code. General Motors, electrical vehicles, running about 100 million lines of code. All this code has to be documented to maintain it. It's an enormous documentation problem. So you can see that will cause publications to grow and finally manage will say, yeah, I think we might want to hire some tech writers. So that's what's going to happen. Look what Forrester is saying. Great organization, know them well. 25% of you listening today are going to build AI building blocks. And I'm glad that you tuned in today just to see one that really does work and sits on top of what you already got. Text analytics, machine learning, but look at the middle there. Robotic process automation. Look at that abbreviation and look what Microsoft did last week. They went out and spent hundreds of millions buying a company that only does robotic process automation. You've probably never heard of it, but it's a hot, hot topic. And it's the automation of process like invoice processing. You're going to see a cobot today. 
A cobot is like a robot, but it's a, a cooperative robot that's helping the technical writer. It's a form of robotic process automation. Everything is going to be automated, but we'll still have our jobs. <laughs> technical writing is still an art form, not a science. The entire little chip box on here, of course, would run the Arbitex demo you're going to see instantly. It would have no problems. It can do millions of instructions, but these guys are into trillions of instructions. 5G. You're going to see a lot coming from Nokia and the telecommunication industry of how these public are. We're delighted Arbitex is coming out with 8.0, and I guarantee everything you see today will work in 8.0, and you'll be able to come out onto those phones through 5G, so it will be instantly uh, be able to be viewed. <clears throat> now, this thing called natural language processing, NLP, you'll start to see advertisements for that. Google, Facebook, we're all hiring people for NLP experts. What is it? It's an algorithm. An algorithm is a mathematical formula that allows text and, and, and uh, analysis. You'll see some of that in a minute of what NLP does. But it allows humans and computers to talk. We have a subset under there and a way of expressing information about the language to the computer. Remember, the computer is just nothing more than a piece of sand when you boil it down. <laughs> it's not much more than that. But you're going to see today, Arbitex editor, go off, grab a document, send it to an AI engine, come back with intelligent. It's got to be intelligent because people get frustrated. We know with technical writers, and some of this technical writers say, well, how does the computer know that? Well, we fed the information. There are some tricks in this. There's no uh, free way of doing it. but. It is, allows the simplification of all this information, which is going to be more and more. Now, how do you deploy it? The first question managers ask, how do I deploy it? It will deploy, the good news, we go backwards and forwards. We're 6, 6x, 7x, 8x, all the way through. Thank goodness the PTC developers haven't changed their API too much. We like the new material, but we're still sitting on the old, and we are actually what we have written and what you're going to see is very, very fast because it is written in C++, which is the language which Arbitect Editor is written in. So you are very close to, the, as they say, the metal. And it executes 10,000 times faster than Java. Java is still an interpreted language. The C++ is a machine language. It goes much faster. First step you're going to have to do is text mining. Well, don't get confused. We're looking at continuous mining here. We're not getting coal out here. We're getting text analysis. We're going to see that in a minute. And you're going to create a dictionary. Average dictionaries are 8,500. We're going to talk a little bit more about dictionaries in a minute. And PTC for the new people. Perhaps there's some Creo people looking over the fence. Welcome. Uh, and some windshield people looking over the fence. You can add have add-ins to Arbitex. Arbitex to, uh, has not publicized this in a, in a great way, but it, people finally learn out there's a thing called Arbitex control language, and that is what the API is called for, for people looking at. And there's a developer edition. Ideally, there is necessary some training to master the simplification. It's more of the transition. The, they, writers come in with their pet words. Well, they want to use this particular word, uh, invoke. I hate invoke. Oh, this, this, this will invoke something. It's like a legal degree, invoking things. They come in, we have to train them out of that. We have, in the simple writings, 208 verbs. Think about that for a minute. What? He took all the verbs away. Uh, you don't even have the verb to test in simplified English, but we'll show you how to get around that. And of course, you've got this great thing called DITA. Thank you, IBM, for the great gift to the world of DITA. It forms the structure. So they form the structure. Arbitex is managing it. DITA is forming the structure. We're coming along and simplifying them because we want our customers to give them a manual they can read. And you can deploy this whole thing in 30 days, maybe 60 days, depending. If you've got a medical device, you can go out and, and do that. You've got an aircraft subsystem, you can go in. And you can do it in bits and pieces, which is very, very useful. What are we doing in the mining? We're miners, too. In fact, we have a title in our company called the head miner. And the head miner puts on the mining mask, and there we are. We're all wearing masks, by the way, because I'm speaking to you today from New York City, two miles from COVID Central. It's serious, people. Wear your masks, wash up. But we're doing a little mining ourselves in here, and we got our mining mask on. The centerpiece in yellow is the key words. You'll notice one there, if you can read on the screen there, Indianness. We have the little Indian 
and the big Indian. Notice I said Indian. I should have said to you Indian. It's an Indian. So these terms have to be known to an AI engine. We've got an Indian and an Indian, probably the Indian. We go through that, we look through this, we can find the bad words and the good words. What we have to do is sort out the abbreviations, the placards, the measurements, the technical terms, the part names, the place names, the brand names, the signal names, the legal words. We had to put in drowsiness the other day on an aerospace for a very large company. Uh, they said, well, we have to warn our people if you use this particular substance to clean the aircraft, you will have, you'll go to sleep. Well, you can't say you go to sleep, so you'll have drowsiness. So those are legal conditions that we need to do, and we need to have some tool names. Tools have fancy names. Ever noticed the smaller the name, the bigger the tool? It goes that way. Now, what we've done here is we've got 1% of the English language. The English language is over a million. And every month, a new term, might more than one can get added. Three or four months ago, you weren't even caught about social distancing. Didn't exist. It's now in the Oxford Dictionary. So we've got all sorts of new words. The word COVID never existed. It existed, but nobody walked around talking about it. Now you see it all over. So these terms have to be quantified into a dictionary. And we're only interested in the, the tiny little bubble of the maintenance of the machine. The rest of it, supermarket, advark, and dog are not in there. But we got 1%. The Kamatha Dictionary has about 8,500. Anything bigger than 10,000, you're not going to make it. Uh, you've got to keep it small, minimals, minimalist, and less is best. I know people don't agree, but I can prove to you, and I will prove to you in a minute, in a little quick demo. Here we have it. What we've got here is our Arbitex. It'll put on all forms, the 8 will work, guaranteed. We're out to 6, to 7. I know people have older ones, and uh, hopefully they update, but it's a very solid. It's been around a long time, folks. But what we've done is we went in there and said, okay, we need a way to talk to our audience, our customers, our technical writers, and a lot of engineers who are attempting technical writing. I bless them, but they're not really technical writers. They are engineers. But they do have the subject matter expertise. And getting them to get a verb or a noun in the correct position sometimes is very difficult, especially in, uh, when their English is their second or maybe the third language. But we're going to see a little bit more. Just the only interface is just this little menu. It's not taking up much real estate at all. It's completely invisible to the Arbitext uh, users. One of the things that Japanese companies do very well is quality. Quality. Just sit back and think of that. Quality. Am I writing a document that they can read? Is it quality? Is it got the quality? Got all the information. The Japanese invented a word, and now you've learned a new word today called a pokeyoke. Well, I know you'll go home and tell the kids about that one. I saw a pokeyoke today. It means goof proofer in Japanese. It was invented by Toyota Motor Company called their TP, TPS, their, their quality control. And the idea at at Toyota is if something is on the assembly line and say the head gasket is not in the correct position, a little bell or siren will go off and a team will race in there and fix it before it gets to the customer. They don't want that warranty claim later on when that vehicle is in Illinois. They don't want that. They want to put a quality. That's why the Camry is the best selling, best produced, highest quality vehicle in the world. And if you don't have quality, you don't make it. But Pokio is it. So what we did is Hamatsu is large, and many companies like GE and Boeing and Caterpillar, and they're all into this six sigma. Nothing wrong with that. If you work for at and it's called five nines. So we're trying to, we've got a five nine telephone system working today. But what we've done is we've built a little six sigma tool. You're going to see it in a minute. And it gives us an idea of the quality. When I see a one sigma document, I just turn to, to write a Bob and say, Bob, I think it's time for a little bit more education. We don't want a one sigma. We want like a 5.5 or a 6. We'll look at that in a minute. But here we got all the information. We had our statistics in there, got our readability. The United States Air Force loves the Fleisch Kincaid score. And if it's not at that 8 or 8 or lower, they've got people in the Pentagon that will reject the documentation. And quite rightly so. Why would you want to go out onto an aircraft carrier and put it out there and nobody can maintain the aircraft on the carrier? What's the use of that? So the idea is to push that down and we have, you're going to see in a minute, some colors. 
we have about 18,000 AI rules. Well, of course, we can't display 18,000 rules on the screen. So we have 40 message classes, <clears throat> and we had to come up with seven, seven colors because we, we're very religious. Why have we got 40 messages? Because Moses was lost in the desert, and we felt when we were building this, we were like Moses. We were lost for 40 days and 40 nights until we got it right. It takes a long while to get it right. The seven colors, because there's seven days in a week. No particular magic to it, but it works. It did take a while to develop. We've had a few iterations. The iteration you're going to see today has been modified. Uh, a very large aerospace uh, uh, client wouldn't uh, let us continue until we removed any of the HTTP connections and the, those web services because of security. So th this today is going nowhere. The information is staying within this little bubble inside Arbitex talking to the machine that it's sitting on. So it's not a web application. It is a desktop application. <clears throat> Now, quick preview of what you're going to see. Then I'm going to break out of this, and we're going to go over the demo. We're going to talk about that and in as much time as we've got there, because I've got a lot of good stuff to show you. So hang but I want to get paint, paint the stage in here. First of all, the detection of text ambiguity. English is the most ambiguous language in the world. It is the most difficult language in the world. I can teach you Mandarin Chinese in 12 weeks, and you'll be quite sufficient at the Walmart in Beijing. It's that easy. It's my far more like, it's completely illogical. You can take 30% out of an English sentence and it'll still make sense. You can't do that with French. So I don't want any text ambiguity. You're going to see some of that in a minute. Validation of the correct use of nouns and verbs. In English, we can take any noun and make it into a verb. It's very convenient for us. It, it really causes extreme problems. I Twitter, you Twitter, they Twitter. Twitter is not a verb, but it's now being used as a verb. Twitter is the sound that a bird makes. So it gets confusing. And of course, when you translate this, they, the translators have to turn that around and say, well, that's the verb I'm going to use. You see that a lot in modern management science, like my friend Invoke. Uh, I just saw one the other day that got me confused. Uh, actually, one of the cruise lines. Whether they survive, we don't know. But they got a thing called onboarding. They said, we want to simplify our onboarding manuals. I thought that they were loading up passengers. No, that's not what they meant. That means when the employees are hired, they go through some orientation process and learn it. So onboarding, I asked them if there was an offboarding. They were not amused. No, of course we don't have an offboarding. So we want to uh, accommodate that and come up with uh, with new verbs for that. Uh, one thing is that the tool will do, artificial intelligence, will sort the nice to know from the need to know. You tell me you got a robust interface on your piece of equipment, I'll tell you you told me nothing. Robust interface, what nonsense. If you tell me that you've got an interface with a 100 hour MTBF, that's mean time between, you've told me everything as an engineer. Give them the information, give them that. So throw away, you can take the, it's an electronic red pen. Mark, we have a message called delete. Take that red pen, slice it through. It is absolutely not necessary. And a lot of information isn't necessary. You don't need to tell it because they can't change it. Once there are many things, the product comes that way. Passive voice and gerunds. The passive voice is the floppy part of English. The should have, would have been, uh, sort of fluffy. Doesn't exist in Arabic. You've got to remove all passive if you're going into Arabic. Arabic is a <clears throat> Semitic language, much more difficult than, than English because it's got middle forms and so on, but you cannot go with the, I'm going to show you passive in a minute. The gerunds, if you are not linguists, the gerunds are those words that end in I-N-G. They cause all the problems. They are forbidden at Airbus. Nobody wants a gerund because a gerund does not show me who does what to whom and how. And when I got a hydraulic system, I want to know what's going on. Whether, if you say installing the software, who's installing the software? IBM's installing the software, the customer's installing it. Tell me, when you install this, oh, I got to install the software. Got to show who's doing the action. Word clusters, you're going to see a, uh, an interesting one in a minute. <clears throat> Word clusters, when you join all the nouns together and you will see disaster going on. Uh, measurement, safety standards, and lastly, the sentence length. There are many more rules. I just wanted to cover some of the highlights. We're staying within the United States Naval Standards for Technical Documentation. No sentence longer than 17 to 21 words. They are correct. 
uh, it does work that way. But I have seen the world record uh, is held at, by a company I cannot name at 176 words in one sentence. A lot of commas, semicolons. I said, you're just wasting your time. And sure enough, they went out of business. So simplification is there. I'm concluding this little part of the presentation, then we will go live on the other one. If you have questions, we love what we're doing. We enjoy it. We're sort of fun people, uh, and we enjoy hiring fun people. So we're always looking for more linguists. If so people want to have fun with language, but send it to info at SMART. I guarantee one of us will get back to you and answer. Don't matter what the question is, we enjoy the questions. We learn from the questions also. That concludes just the, the framing there. Uh, now we're going to take a look at the tool, and then we will take some questions. I guarantee we will finish on time. <clears throat> Bear with us, we need to switch over. Just switching over there. Now, Melissa, can we see the screen? Yes, I can. Okay, here we have it. We have Harbor Tax Editor. It's not a, a common, I wish, I hope more people can learn about Harbor Tax. It's, it's a fine tool, but you can see what we have. We're running a little older version here because I'm in, uh, in my pod. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to move out of my part. I'm, I'm not going to chance that the heat will kill the, the verse. Uh, no, I'm not going to take that chance. But what we have here, I'm going to show you. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'll go to my little menu. I want to know how good this document is. Okay, and I'm going to run it. Bingo. There we have it. Instantly. That's C++ for you. Instantly, I know I have a average document at a four sigma. Okay, right Bob. We got some work to do, and we got the work to do by these little classes up in here. Remember, there are 40 classes because Moses was there for 40 days and lost. So Moses was lost on three deletes, punctuation, got one product liability. Oops, red flag, red flag. Uh, Komatsu lawyers want to know about that, and good. There are certain keywords you cannot use in technical manuals that you want to be warning your customer. Failure to warn is the biggest on claims. We want to look at that too. So we took a look at that. We also have another tool, which is very interesting, which the Europeans find absolutely fascinating. Uh, we have a little metric converter. <laughs> and anybody looking in from, uh, from Europe, the United States and Burma share the great distinction of being the only two countries in the world that do not use the metric system. We haven't a clue what a millimeter is. Uh, however, in parts of the United States, you're beginning to see metric dimensions. And in the New York City and the public advertising for the, for the virus thing, they've got, we must be spaced at two meters. That took a lot of people. What do you mean two meters? But they also then said six feet. So we can see that we do need to accommodate our European and our, our Southeast Asian, all our customers outside the United States work in the metric system. So here we go. We're going to run through this thing, and it's going through the lines in here, and it's running around, and bingo! There we got some colors. Can we see those colors, Melissa? Yes. Yes, we can. But I want to make sure. Sometimes WebEx has a little problem with colors. Okay, we got colors. Now, you cannot see me, but I have a keyboard in front of me with function keys. Those are those F keys, which we have renamed the Freddy keys. So when I press over that little red mark on the left side there, over the word several, when I press my F2 key, I get a suggestion called measurement. Several is one of those words in the English language has absolutely no meaning. So I'm going to ask the AI engine, what do you mean? The AI engine says some or give a range. Often we'll just say, give me a range, several. <clears throat> so to rewrite that would be very simple. Find out how many symbols are shown in here, and then say the CIL shows 10 program symbols. Very simple. The CIL shows 10. We're going to look at it more, and we're going to look at the rewrite underneath it in here. I'm going to quickly move along because uh, we don't drive anything. That uh, mining machine has no driver, thank goodness. And we don't drive. We don't like any drives. Uh, we also have things like by means of fluff, awkward. And we can just say by the procedure. Uh, now, here's a famous one. This is for General Motors, who are big, and many of the manufacturers use a thing called a CAN bus. Had a young engineer in Europe, he said, where do you catch the CAN bus? to get to the beach. I said, no, you can't catch this CAN bus. This sucker is called a CAN bus. 
This is a, an electrical standard called CAN. I don't know what it stands for. Central something. The engineers will know. And it's a bus. It's an electrical bus. It's not an electrical bus. It is an electrical bus. Uh, it can get confusing. But we would say the CAN bus standard. <clears throat> so we're very conscious of those types of words that have double meaning. Now, <clears throat> I've got some rewrite below it. So I'm going to move the screen in here a little bit so you can see it. hope everybody can see it there. Uh, and I, but I'll be talking about it. We're going to go to what is known as the canary in the mine. There was a time when canaries were taken into mines, and if the canary had a problem, you had a problem. Well, the new canary in the mine is a very sophisticated thing called the mer. Again, got to get that into that dictionary, because how does it know what a mer? Mer means sea in French, and it could get mistranslated, but it's not. It's the methane relay. There's a little methane detector. Methane is a very bad thing to have in a mine. It will explode. So let's look at what some of the instructions there. Well, first of all, I'm hitting my F32 key. I'm getting suggestions. We use show. We don't like identify. We don't like indicate. The simplified technical English coming from aerospace standard has only 208 verbs, and you have to stay within that. We found that's a very good idea. So we've added a few more little verbs for the Komatsu language because we have simplified English. But we took from the other standard. We took from good. We just made it a little bit better for them. So we're going to show. So everywhere in this document, we're going to show. Monterey in French. It works beautiful. And Spanish. Or you've got a good cognates for show. Indicate is a little bit, you need an indicator to indicate. Things don't indicate. It shows. And of course, here's the, uh, a very interesting one for any of the legal people hanging around today. Uh, inflammable product liability. It's flammable. The common form is flammable. And you can go and prove me correct later on when you go and get that Lysol, that Lysol spray out there. Look what it says on the label. Flammable. We actually do a lot of labeling, by the way, where in this works beautiful in pharmaceutical labeling. But flammable is the correct product liability term. Inflammable connotes that it doesn't happen, but it does. The two words have the same meaning. You can look that up later on because I, I don't have enough time. Again, we don't indicate, we don't display. Um, we are going to show. And we're moving along in here, the presence. I'm in the presence of God, probably. Uh, we don't have the presence. We just say, there it is. But you can see now, let's look at some of the rewriting down in here. Look at this one. Cutter, frame, level, light, symbol. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, if a Spanish translator comes along, <laughs> they have immediate problems. What is the subject here? How can we make this better for So one of the benefits here, one of the golden benefits, is we're going to improve this documentation. And it fits into what Google and Amazon and Microsoft are doing with automated language translation. Not the topic today, but we, have, we can do that. So we took that. And you can see through this tool, we've got an indication. A little message in here says, I got a word cluster. It's up to you, the technical writer, to fix the damn thing. We show them how to fix it. We've got to fix this. There's no way we can let that document go to a customer in Latin America because it's just not, they're not, they're going to miss that part of it. We don't want them. We want to understand. What we did over here is we said, this light symbol is, n is for the level indicator on the cutter frame. This light symbol is for the level indicator. How clear can you say it? It didn't take much to do it, ladies and gentlemen. It's a simple thing. Simple things in life sometimes look difficult. This isn't difficult. When you get into this, you'll even start analyzing road signs for germs. Imagine that. Uh, <clears throat> we like the use of articles, and we have a style. Putting the articles is fine. We encourage it, because when you do produce products that are sold in Japan, and I think we may have some listeners today in Japan. We're putting the articles for you because when they see the article, they know that's a noun, and that helps them disambiguate the English and makes it a lot easier. Uh, have any of you, uh, I hope not, have been to the doctor? Have you ever noticed that the doctor is always going to come in a short while? Oh, yeah, well, the doctor will be along in a short while. After you waited four hours, the doctor hasn't turned up. Now you know what a short while is. Short while is absolute nonsense. <laughs> you tell me how long this symbol. So we have decided that this symbol is going to show in five seconds. Now, how do we get from short while to five seconds? Because we took cake and coffee 
to the vice president of engineering, sat down, across the old devil sitting there, and he says, well, you don't need to know that. Well, you do need to know that. You go to engineering, you find out what that is, a technical right, and you put it into your documentation. You translate engineering ease into simplified English. That's your job because our customers. So there is a little translation going on between the engineering and this type of thing. So you can see quite a lot of them are rewritten in here. Just pick any sentence in here. It's very, very simple. We have the RDT trip switch. It's a real thing. We have the CAN bus properly done there. We're saying the switches close in five seconds. And <clears throat> if it is safe to do so, continue to step two. If it is safe to do so, yeah, wonderful fluff. What we said there, make a good plan for installation. That's all we need to know. And then we did say, before you continue, before you engineer continue to step to make sure the conditions are safe. We're thinking about the liability. We want to make sure that the operator and the supervisor understand that. Okay, we'll move down in here because we're uh, removing on time there. We've got some interesting sentences in here. We got our friend, the green lightning bolt. I like this one, the green, because as far as I know, lightning only comes in white. But these guys have got a green lightning bolt. You can see the green lightning bolt right there. Picture of it. Pictures really are worth a thousand words. But more importantly, Komatsu makes a wonderful product, and this miner really works. But let's give the miner the respect it has. Let's capitalize it. Oh, I get so mad when people don't capitalize proper names. It's a continuous miner. To be disambiguated by the AI engine as a continuous mining engineer. Uh, this continuous miner does not take vacations, holidays, it continuously mines. And uh, the mining engineers change that part. But yes, style is important. If you want to get capitalization bold, you've got it all. You've got every facility in our text ready to go in there. Okay, we come down to our little friend, the Red Cross. Another one, it's the Red Cross symbol in the rewrite. But look at this, central consolidated unit. I didn't make up this, and I thank much for allowing us to show it, but it's an idea to express to people, you've got to get your acronyms correctly. Central Consolidated Unit, the CCU, Consolidated Controller Unit. Same document, we got two names for the same thing. Not good. And Kamatsu's engineers saw that and said, we got to change that. So what does AI do for us? It changes it to the central control unit. What do I do? I come over here. I'm, my biggest task today is to move my mouse. I click, bingo. I now got the central control unit. You can, of course, use the global replace when you know that. Go back into your Arbitext editor and change over all of the consolidated control unit. You've got all the power of Arbitext sitting out there for you. You're just working on content. Uh, I like this one. Uh, I like this. Uh, parables. Uh, a NATO general told me he was sent to Greece and he sent ahead an order to clear the uh, parade ground. Got a little mistranslated. So they took a bulldozer in Athens and they cleared, made it completely alone, removed everything. He just meant remove all the people that were going to bring in some tanks. But <laughs> obviously we don't clear faults. This is a common fault in technical writing. We correct faults. We cannot clear a fault. We must correct a fault, and this is found in fault finding. Troubleshooting is an old word that's vanishing. So we can see on, on that. Uh, we have another short while. Uh, we have a phrasal verb in here called a shutdown. It stops, very simple, because we can take this into phrasal verbs that cause a lot of problems in Southeast Asia and understanding our verbs and our prepositions. So we take the verb to shut and we throw that little all down on there and it gets confused. And I guess um, Melissa's about ready to say, you can shut up. <laughs> you can shut up. <laughs> but I will shut up, Melissa, and I will call and I thank everybody for coming to the presentation. I thank you very much for your attendance. I hope you learned some things about AI.